At the end of yesterday's episode, you probably remember we were going to uh, take a number 50, a number 29, and a number 37 and uh, glue them together. Okay, we are going to do that later. In fact, very soon. But uh, if, if you also will remember, we were using one of these poking devices and uh, and I was wondering, uh, actually it was, it was this one here, and I was wondering how come I couldn't get it to go into the little hole in the, uh, in the part. And then we looked closer and we realized it was a tiny bit blunt. I've since discovered why. I'm going to show you a couple of close-ups. Now this, this one here is the one we were using and just a coincidence we picked the good one. It's, it's in pretty good shape. It's, it's not very blunt, it's not perfect, but it will be when we get through with it. But this one here, as you're going to see, uh, I'm going to put the uh, Super Macro on and show it to you. And, uh, well, actually, to be honest with you, I've already done it. I've already put the Super Macro on and I've already done a close-up of this one, which you are going to see in a moment. But first, look at the good one. And even the good one is, you know, it's not, it's not perfect. When you look at stuff up really close, you can see all the little imperfections. Now, this actually feels quite sharp. You, you don't realize that it's it's a little bit blunt. And if you push hard enough, this, this blunt one even feels a little bit sharp. Anyway, uh, this is the one that we're gonna we're gonna work on, and this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a file here, and I think probably what I'll do is to keep this thing rotating in a constant speed as I drag it along. I'm just gonna put it in my uh, cordless drill. Yeah. Okay, we'll do the good one first here. And the idea is, just we just want to sort of, you know, take any little burrs off the end. Okay. Now that's, that's probably almost, <laughs> I was going to say surgically sharp, but not that sharp. Um, now we'll get the burrs off the bad one. Okay, I am fully aware that we are probably going to be taking the chrome, in fact we are definitely going to be taking the chrome plating off of the tip here. But according to the packaging, this is supposed to be stainless steel, so I'm not too worried about it rusting on us. This is, uh, as you can see, it's 1,000 grit sandpaper. And we're just going to polish it a little bit here. It is probably surgically sharp now. <laughs> I'll do the other one as well. Okay, so they're not surgically sharp, but they're sharp. I can't tell which is which anymore. I should have maybe marked them, but it doesn't matter. I'll uh, put the super macro back on and uh, I'll, I'll show you. It may not look like it, but both of these are enlarged to about the same magnification. Now, I did a little better job, obviously, on the one on the top. It's a little bit more, you might say, pointy. Now, we could have got these surgically sharp if we'd wanted to. Down in my workshop, I have sandpaper that goes up to 12,000 grit. Remember we used 1,000 grit just now? Well, I've got grit that goes 12 times finer. Yeah, and we could have got it really, really sharp. But why? Now you want to keep in mind, we are looking at drawings, not photographs. Okay, it says variable speed winch left, that'd be this one. And electric winch right, that'd be this one. And this is the one we're making. Yeah, it kind of looks like that. Now, just in case somebody is wondering, 
Where did I get these drawings? They are in this book right here. Now I think we should be doing a dry run here. I want to make sure that this little part is going to fit. Okay, it does appear like it's going to fit. Okay. Now, I think I'd be making a mistake if I was to take the uh, extra thin applicator and try and fill that little hole. Because, um, as you know, it's going to end up going all over the place. Look at, look at the detail on this thing here. Maybe I should be putting the macro lens on. A lot, of, a lot of detail in there. Okay, now the detail that I was referring to was, you know, all the, uh, all around the sides here. There's even what appears to be almost a little letter there. Looks like a letter P or something, but maybe it's supposed to represent a switch of some kind. It almost looks as though this is a little bit crooked here. There, that's, that looks better. Okay. Get this turned over. Come on, there. Okay, it's supposed to go like that on top of there. I'm having a problem, aren't I? There. It's on. Now, there is something here that possibly some people don't realize. These tweezers that I'm using right here are just a pair of tweezers like this that I cut the ends off so they're not so pointy and then I glued some ordinary inner tube rubber on the inside I just I just used CA glue to hold it in place and so far it's still holding and uh, these these tweezers here I did not buy these I made these the way you see them and uh, yeah I thought I'd just mention that because I was kind of getting the feeling that possibly some people did not realize that uh, these tweezers were not bought, they're just sort of homemade. And they're very, very handy for something like this. Now, if they were locking tweezers, it'd be even better. Now they're locking tweezers. <laughs> what do they say about the mother of invention? And speaking of inventions, 
We gotta finish this up yet today too. Now this rotating cut thing is really not necessary here. I try to cut uh, so it's you're grabbing it at its narrowest point. There's a, it's, there's a little bit of flashing that's proud of this, you know. Uh, this is going to be glued down onto the deck. This this is the bottom of the of the uh, winch, and um, I know I could take my file and just. Well, it's a little bit rough there, isn't it? Once again, I'm sure glad I can cut out the dead spots because it took me a while to find my file. Okay, it'll sit a little bit more flush on the deck now. Maybe I should be using my my fine sanding stick on this, especially on the top here. Just get rid of the worst of it. Now I will be the first to admit that the best way to do this, if you can, is to pick the little part up in your fingers and hold it like this. It's a lot easier. Um, now if it gets much smaller than this, I can't really grab hold of it. Okay, at least we're getting rid of the little burrs. Yeah. All of our little winches now are made except for one. And I don't think I need to worry about them getting mixed up because they are distinctively different. The windlass comes out of this side on this one and this side on this one. Now. I left one because I want to show you that I discovered a much easier way to put this piece on here. Okay, here's what we did different. Now I suppose because I'm doing this on camera, it's going to be a fiasco. Yes, it was. <laughs> okay. I'm going to dry this off and do it again. Okay, I'm, I've got control of myself now. Let's just see if I can't... Uh, if I can move this more into the field of view here without it sticking on everything. Okay. <laughs> Trust me, this went really, really well for eight or nine times in a row. Okay, now, now what I did was, instead of putting the little piece on the, uh, on the big piece, because I wouldn't be able to see where everything goes, now, now you can see how easy it is to see where the, uh, the hole is.
Okay. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, you just have to take my word for it. It did actually work extremely well. Um, once again, maybe I shouldn't show this, but... Okay, I'm not going to paint these now until after we get more small stuff nipped off that we're going to want to have the dark, the dark gray. Um, but they're done. I think they they turned out pretty good. Why do I show stuff like this? Now, I was thinking afterwards that what I could have done is I could have sharpened it on the whetstone and then honed it on the honing wheel here and brought it up to what you might call or what I keep calling surgical sharp. What is surgical sharp anyway? Is it a special kind of sharp or is it just real, real sharp? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, however, if we if we get this thing so that it is it is too sharp, it's going to end up damaging whatever you use a, use it for to you know to hold down little parts or whatever. So so I think too sharp would actually be a hindrance instead of a help. Okay, we are done. Step thirteen. That was these things right here. And step 14 is a whole bunch of little tiny pieces. Looks like we need G, F, E. Okay, we need the G, F, and the E sprue. But I'm thinking that perhaps what we should do before the afternoon gets away on us completely is uh, finish this thing off and uh, see if it's going to work. It, it's an idea that may or may not work. I've got to glue this little piece in here. Just a wee drop here. Okay, we're sitting on a piece of waxed paper right now. And uh, I'm going to just give it a drop of CA thick here. cure really good. Uh, I'm out of curing agent so we're gonna have to let it cure naturally and thick takes a long time so uh, we're probably going to be looking at this tomorrow now. Anyway we can continue on and try and find some small parts. Now before we get going here and looking for little pieces off our sprue I was noticing that that CA thick was just going more or less straight across and I was afraid that the uh, jaw will not be able to go all the way down uh, so what I did was I I cleaned it off there just a little bit probably some of you noticed that too um, just didn't want you to worry about it now we'll check it tomorrow okay I realize that it's a little bit hard for you to read all of this from way back here well actually you're only about eight inches away but uh, 
Yeah, being as that we already had the F sprue out here at the model table nice and handy because we were getting F parts, um, may as well find the, the, the F pieces. And it looks to me like there's only one, two, three. Four or five. It looks like there's only. Oh no, there's more. Here's some more over here. Um, I'm going to have to be careful to keep these separate because uh, it appears to me that they, a lot of them look alike. Like the, these ones, the the G4s, they they look a, a lot like, say, the G7. So I'm, maybe I better get some tuna tins going here and some labels. F24. F6 F39 I think that's it for the F sprue. Okay, we need a total of three F24s. There's one, two, and three. Now, there are three F sprues, and each one only has one 24. So, one, two, three. Okay, and we'll trim the excess uh, flashing off of that later. Okay, for F6, we need three. One, two, three. And here we go. Now, I know this looks like a 9, but you're reading it upside down. This is definitely it. Now, I can either nip it way back here and use this piece of sprue to help hold it for when I paint it, but then I'm going to have to, if I paint it with the sprue on it, then I'm going to have to mess around and repaint again. So I think, I think I'll just take it right here like this. Okay, for this step, number 14, it looks like we only need two F39s, and yet there are a total of uh, nine of them altogether. Like uh, this one here is also 39, even though it doesn't have a number attached, because it can't be anything else. Um, okay, so we only need two of them, so I'll take this one that's not marked, and I'll take this one right here. Okay, that must mean that we're going to need some somewhere else during the build. All right. Okay, that is it for our F sprue. You gotta handle these so gently. And also, I think that's almost it for our coffee. Well, there's a couple of sips there. But you know what? I think that's also it for today's episode. So we're going to have to call it quits here. It's getting on here in Winnipeg. And all being well, tomorrow, we'll see if this thing works. I'm pretty sure it will. I think that CA is probably set now, but I don't want to touch it. Anyway, thanks for watching folks, and all being well, we will see you tomorrow. <laughs>